We're talking about NTT yeah. laying the foundation for smart cities. And is this just, you know, you're writing this up to get a, you know, a couple free trips to Las Vegas because <laughs> last time I checked, us analysts don't need any more trips. No, to- especially the Las Vegas, Pat. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. you know, we'll all be probably getting to Las Vegas, you know, eight or 10 times this year. I think that was the number for me last year. But now this was, this is, this is a very unique situation. So, um, NTT did reach out to me last year. It was during Mobile World Congress, and there was an announcement around what they were doing uh, with the city of Las Vegas to help basically provide a platform for smart city services. And so I spoke with Michael Sherwood, who's the chief technology officer for the city of Las Vegas. That was a Zoom call, and that was in the September time frame. And then I was actually back in Vegas for another event. Shocking. Yeah, shocking. I think it was Palo Alto Ignite. And I actually went downtown to the city center and met with Michael in his office. And we talked about a number of different things. And then as a result of that, um, I spent some time at Mobile World Congress with NTT. I learned more about their capability. NTT announced a relationship with Cisco, how they're both going to go after private 5G. And then and then the article came together. And um, I'm a movie. I'm a movie nerd, and so you know the the headline was how NTT is helping the city of Las Vegas get smart. If you remember that Maxwell Smart, you know from the oh, '60s yeah. and the reboot and the shoe phone. And I figured I worked the shoe phone into the article as well. But <laughs> when at a high level, um, what what NTT positions this so this deployment as? Uh, they de- they basically position it as the largest deployment in the United States for smart city and. The, the applications are around telemedicine support, around providing broadband to the unconnected. And what's amazing, you know, when you get past all the casinos on the strip yeah. and you get into the downtown area, I mean, there's some pretty impoverished areas just past all of that. And, and so Michael was telling me, you know, fixed wireless access is, is definitely um, something that's, that's being evaluated. Um, this piloting of, of shuttle vehicles for the elderly is something that's currently under investigation. And then some very practical applications using smart cameras and computer vision to improve safety in certain parts of the city, um, as well as um, smart traffic metering and, and, and that sort of thing. And I think, and what's really, as I talked to Michael about this, it, it dawned on me, well, why isn't this in partnership with the casinos? Because there are a whole yeah. host of private 5G use cases like neutral host and AR, VR activations that my colleague Anshul likes to talk about on our podcast, the GTO and 5G. So, you know, and then also they're, you know, Michael and team are experimenting with millimeter wave and they're, they're doing that in the unlicensed band. And so it's, it's pretty exciting. And, and in talking with NTT, I've also learned that stay tuned, this new relationship with Cisco, they're, they're working on some pretty big projects that'll be breaking. And so to, to kind of address, you know, uh, the conversation path that we had before yes private 5g adoption has been slow but i think 2023 is the year where it's really going to take off yeah i mean the the technologies are coming together on that and i in a way i wish you know i i think we the industry got a little bit of a little bit ahead of itself on the promotion of 5g and i think yeah. you know we were part and parcel uh uh to that but it, you know, I, I think all of these waves require some irrational exuberance up front to get to get investment going. And uh, one example, you know, if I look at 4G, a lot of the killer 4G applications like the Ubers uh, came at the tail end of the 10 year build out of, yeah. of 4G uh, LTE. And uh, there was little, very little. Uh, hype and promotion aside of kind of the normal channels. But when you look at what, what 5G can do, it is so different yeah. from 4G uh, LTE. Uh, one of its its biggest features is it, it can be um, basically rate limited, meaning you pay for the features that you want. Mm-hmm. Do you want high performance, low latency? Do you want uh, low late... Uh, uh, high, you know, higher latency, lower performance at this amazing price, you can do that. It's, yeah. it's fractionalized yeah. as opposed to the way that we used to do this was, you know, let's put the nook on, on 2G. 
that basically goes away and gets shut down. But in, in reality, it was only cheaper because of the depreciation and amortization on the hardware it had yeah. been paid for, yeah. right? It's still cost, but uh, it's better aligning the cost and features of the service with what it's delivering. And mm -hmm. guess what? It takes a lot more time, right? Yeah. So we're going to get there, particularly when it comes to, you know, I'm sorry, I need to you know, throw this out there, the web 4.0, industry 4.0 stuff that requires uh, massive MIMO. It requires this uh, fractionalized uh, quality of service where, you yeah. know, you can charge, you know, charge and make money, a good margin, yeah. on, you know, 50 cent uh, uh, oil uh, tracking line that's, you know, every mile yeah. uh, as opposed to uh, what it is, uh, what it is today. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. First of all, it's great to see NTT out there. Yeah. They're really a company that appears to be making a much bigger move in in uh, the Western uh, worlds because they are an absolute beast uh, globally. But you just don't yeah. hear their name uh, a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. I think they're doubling down in this market, Pat. To your point, and I'm glad you brought up the fractional sort of capability of 5G. That's achieved through something called network slicing. And quite honestly, you know, that's that's virtualization of the network yeah. that was not achievable with the LTE standard. And so, yeah, I mean, that's going to open up a host of enterprise use cases. I mean, I believe, I mean, there's some pretty obvious consumer 5G use cases like, um, you know, low latency mobile gaming and that sort of thing. But, you know, 99.9% .9 of, of the really transformative applications will be in the enterprise. Network slicing is going to enable that. And hey, by the way, here's an opportunity for the for the the mobile network operators that have spent billions of dollars building every G, you know, yeah. in, in history to go monetize it beyond just a, a a silly unlimited plan to consumers, right? So yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, I'm su super excited about that. And and right now I'm I'm, you know, I'm motivated. And what I'm trying to do is is help enterprises see the 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 value of this. Now the funny part is. Uh, when, you know, they're, they're not, there's no company, industrial company out there is like, give me some, I want some private 5G just for the sake of private 5G. It's right. no, I, I, I need to radically change the way that I build or design, build and move my products. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, where this comes in. And, and, you know, I, I think you've taken a tour of the Ericsson um, factory in, in Texas where it's all 5g enabled, yeah. right? Yeah. But they actually went out and did it. You've got robots going around. They're actually doing PCB, PCA, final assembly, yeah. chip shooting, um, uh, all that stuff, but no good stuff, uh, will, and, you know, hopefully, you know, NTT, you know, your next trip to Vegas, you're, you're sitting in the, the big gambler suite. 